I'd like to take up on the theme that Dr. Walensky started with. If I could have the first slide, I'm going to be spending a couple of minutes addressing two issues that are very much on the attention of people throughout the country and the world. The first is, as Dr. Walensky mentioned, the real world effectiveness of vaccines in the context of the Delta variant, and second, breakthrough infections, what they mean, and let's discuss them a bit. Next slide. Let's look at the real world effectiveness against the Delta variant. If you look at the three components of PCR confirmed infection, it's 79% in a UK study. Symptomatic infection is 88%. And just as Dr. Walensky mentioned, the vaccines are doing exactly what we're asking them to do when it comes to keeping you out of the hospital out of serious disease and certainly preventing your death. Just a quick comment on the 79%. That may look a bit low, but remember, the efficacy of the clinical trials that were published by the trials that gave you something like 94 or 95% was against clinically apparent disease. What we're talking about here is just infection. So you would expect it to be a bit lower. This has important implications when you get into the discussion of what we call breakthrough infections. Next slide. Now, if you take these data and look at them across multiple countries, but ask the question, what does a full component of a Pfizer mRNA provide with regard to protection against alpha versus delta in three separate countries? The data on the left are essentially the data I just showed you. Alpha now is in blue and Delta is in red. When you get to Canada, you see a similar protection against hospitalization, which is the area a bit to the right in that middle panel compared to symptomatic disease. When you get to Israel, you see what we now know from reports from Israel, that you see a diminution at around 64% for confirmed and symptomatic disease. This is likely due to the fact that Israel has started their vaccination program before the other countries. So you're seeing a little bit down the pike from the beginning. But note again, the 93% consistently showing protection against advanced disease. Next slide. Now, if you ask the question, what about the reduced risk of either symptomatic infection, hospitalization, or death when you compare vaccinated individuals with unvaccinated people. What is the fold reduction when you're in red with unvaccinated versus in blue with full vaccinated? As you can see, for disease itself, it's an eight-fold reduction. For hospitalization, 25-fold reduction. And for death, 25-fold reduction. Let's move on now to breakthrough infections. Just a couple of comments. We can pass this slide. Go to the next slide, please. The breakthrough infections, we have no vaccine is 100% effective. And so you can expect breakthrough infections. So even with a high vaccine effectiveness, most of these infections are going to be asymptomatic or mild. And we know that. We've already seen that from the experience in Massachusetts, in Provincetown, and we see it in all other situations. An important point to bring up is that the greater percentage of people that are vaccinated, even with a high degree of protection, the absolute number of breakthrough infections might appear high. That's not the critical number. The critical number is what is the proportion of the vaccinated people who in fact are, uh, are getting breakthrough infections. And that's the critical one. The bottom line of what we are saying is that, next slide, get vaccinated. I say that every single time we all say it. The COVID vaccines give strong protection against the Delta variant and it protects you, your family, and your community. 
Thank you, Dr. Thompson.